Hello students and welcome to Smart Kids Tutorials. In this video, we will be going through certain expected questions coming from maths level to paper. Okay. Now the problems that I'm going to discuss doesn't mean that the same problem will come. It's the same type of question that will come. That is what we are looking at. So if you know the type of question that is going to come, then you can prepare accordingly for those type of questions only rather than trying to revise everything from uh, your portion okay so uh, for those of you who are not looking to score uh, full marks okay there's no need to go through the entire portion rather you can focus on few aspects of certain chapters and study for that and only that will come for the examination so what I'm saying is work hard but also at the same time work smart okay so that this is going to be our mantra or trick to score uh, score uh, hundred percent in this. A hundred percent would be different for different people. For those who are looking to score full marks, for them it is hundred percent. For those who are aiming for a certain uh, amount of marks, let's say sixty percent of marks, for them that will be their hundred percent. So, but whatever you target, let's try and bag those marks rather than leaving it for chance or probability. Okay, so let's begin. So preparation is the key. You need to prepare for whatever you do in life. And similarly for this upcoming examination, you need to do your best. You need to prepare as uh, best as possible. Okay. See, because if you fail to prepare, you will prepare to fail in the upcoming examination. So rather than crying afterwards as to what marks you got, uh, might as well sacrifice your uh, leisure time, sacrifice your full uh, daily habits rather, okay, whatever. Uh, minimize any everything in order to maximize the amount of time you can dedicate towards your study and towards the upcoming examination. Okay, so that is a key to preparation. So first we'll begin with section wise breakup of marks. As you may know that uh, your uh, paper is divided into four parts. Section A, B, C and D. Section A consists of one mark each. Section B consists of two marks each. And section C consists of uh, so consists of three marks each. And section D which consists only of two marks for level two maths. Uh, it's uh, four marks each. Okay. So at this point I would ask you if you have your uh, prelims paper keep it handy with you because as we go through the video you will need to refer to your paper so as I speak if you can refer to your paper it will throw more light on what I'm trying to say and what you need to do okay to prepare uh, for the upcoming examination so let's begin we will see section A has got 20 marks section B has got 16 marks section C has got 36 marks and section D has got 8 marks. If you have a look, chunk of your marks are in section C. This consists of 12 questions, each of 3 marks. And that is why you have 36 marks. So, if somebody wants to pass or somebody wants to score good marks, then this is the one that you need to target, section C. And it is not that difficult. It just needs a, a little bit of practice for you and focus preparation in order to bag those marks. I'm not saying just focus on section C, but section C contains the bulk of your marks, almost 50%, almost 50% of your maths marks. Somebody, so let's say it's an ideal scenario, but I'm not saying it is something that will be perfected by any student. Uh, if you focus only on section C and try to focus only on those 12 questions, you will back 36 marks and pass, which means you don't have to focus on section A, B, or D, section C, because 28 out of 80 is your passing mark. Of course, you will have your 20 marks, which is your internal assessment. But I'm just saying, in the theoretical paper, the section C is more than enough to help you pass. Okay? Though that is the case, I would say, advise you, to focus on the other sections as well because you may never know 
section C, what type of questions may come. You may be able to answer, you may not be able to answer. And you have to be perfect in order to bag those 28 to 36 marks. So, we'll focus on all the sections, not just section C. So, once again, keep your prelim paper handy because now we are going to start with uh, uh, where you need to focus on on the questions uh, the, and I'm also looking at the moment at the Go Ahead Masters Association joint SSC pre preparatory examination that came in Jan 2024 for maths level 2. So I suggest you also keep the paper handy as we go through the video. Okay, come to the next and uh, just a breakup of marks for each of the chapters that you have got. You've got 15 chapters and if you have a look, uh, I've um, listed them down based on the highest number, based from the highest to the lowest. So you have pair of linear equations which have got 10 marks for that. And good for maths level 2 is that you do not have word problems. So which means you have a graph that is coming. So if you prepare for the graph that is coming for 4 marks, and if you prepare for an elimination method or substitution method, that is for 3 marks. So, 4 plus 3, 7 marks. Here itself, you can bag 7. Okay. Next, you have introduction to trigonometry, 7 marks. Then, statistics is also 7 marks. Quadratic equation is also 7 marks. So, here we give 7 plus 7 plus 7, 21 marks, plus one, 10, 31 marks. Again, you can even narrow your uh, study to this just for the 4 chapters. And if you bag, can bag all these four chapters, you will be able to pass in this exam. That is, those are, this is just for those students who are not looking to study a lot, who are not going to take maths in the future. Okay. Maths will be there at some point of time in your life. You cannot escape maths. But yes, in reduced form, not the, what you see right in front of you at the moment. Then you have construction, six marks, easy to bag. Triangles, 6 marks. Real numbers, 5 marks. Polynomials, 5. And areas related to circles, also 5. And also surface area and volume will be 5. Then you have 4 marks for arithmetic progression, coordinate geometry, circles. And 3 marks for app applications of trigonometry. So just one question will be there. Usually a very easy one. And then you have probability 2 marks. And this probability 2 marks come for 1, 1 mark each in section A. So let's move further. So, for those who are looking just to pass, you can prepare for just 20 questions, okay? Uh, but you need to be perfect to score full marks in those 10 in order to pass. If you are not sure, then I suggest after this 10 questions, you continue to see, uh, watch the rest of the video to see how you can score elsewhere Sometimes what happens is you may find certain chapters that are easier for you to grasp, which may not be there in these 10 questions. Okay. So you might as well study those and make up your marks. It doesn't matter whether you do this 10 or you do some other 10 or some other questions. As long as you get 28 to 30 out of 80, you're passing. Okay. So this can help you save a lot of time. Just focusing on that. Otherwise, it will be like, oh my God, I have to do maths. And I don't know where to start. Forget about where to end. I don't know what to do. I and mean, it's like I've exams are on my head. I don't know what to do now. I'm so tense. So there's no need for all that. Just focus on this 10 and you should be ready for your examination. So passing is very easy. co board has made it very easy to pass. And you should be able to easily back. 30 out of 80 marks. So that's what I mean. The first thing is, let's go to question number 41. So I'm targeting the big marks first. And you should be able to practice and get this correct. Question number 41, which is section D. If you notice, the, the question that came was about uh, finding the mean marks by direct method. Okay. So what I want you all to do is practice how to find mean by direct method. It is easy, very easy. Only thing is, do not make mistakes in adding or dividing 
you know when you uh, you have to get um, you have to um, and also multiplication so you multiplication fi into xi and then add all the fi xi values that you get to get a summation of fi xi and then division division of fi xi upon fi don't do mistakes over here most of the times you are able to uh, grasp the uh, method properly but you make mistakes in basics that is addition subtraction multiplication and division so please don't do these mistakes if you know everything and you make mistakes in this basics of maths then all your marks are lost okay so you do this you get four marks let's go to the next one linear equations graph again four marks very easy okay we just need to put the values okay now some of you may be having uh, uh, this um, confusion as like okay what value should i use sometimes i don't know what to use for x and uh, y just focus on x and always use this strategy go from 0 to 3 positive 0 to 3 choose a positive ones first if you are getting value for y with those well and good if not do not proceed further to 4 rather try negative 1 Negative two and negative three. Do not be afraid. This is your time. You are at home. You can try with negative numbers. If you make a mistake, you are not losing marks. Rather, you are learning. Make mistakes as many as possible at home. It will be a learning experience. Okay, rather than trying something new in, during the paper. So start with zero, one, two, three positive numbers. and if you don't get the value then you move on to negative 1 negative 2 negative 3 and let's say if you don't still get sometimes you don't get you need to go higher so don't go to negative 4 go to positive 4 go to positive 4 then go to pos negative 4 positive 5 negative 5 in this way systematically you will cover all rather than okay let me try 3 okay let me try 5 uh i'll go to 0 and check no like you're wasting your time and you're increasing the uncertainty and this will lead to more errors so avoid be systematic in the choice that you make for x the values that you take for x and it will be easier for you next third the this is for 4 plus 4 8 marks okay next is for 3 marks so you have a for maths level 2 there is a, you will surely get a theorem which will be for basic proportionality theorem pythagoras theorem or converse of the pythagoras theorem okay now my suggestion to and you're going to get a choice between any uh, two either now for uh, your uh, preliminary paper there was a choice between uh, basic proportionality theorem and uh, you had a choice for your pythagoras theorem okay uh, Uh, so the converse of pythagorasm so uh, what i would suggest is you out of this 3 okay you do any 2 though the probability is always going to be the basic proportionality theorem now if it becomes very very difficult for you to uh, study any of these then i suggest you do basic proportionality theorem 99% basic proportionality theorem is coming because the choice will all mostly between basic proportionality theorem or pythagoras theorem or basic proportionality theorem or converse of the pythagoras theorem okay it is quite um, the chances of pythagoras theorem and converse theorem coming is 1% out of 100 both of them together okay but there is still a chance of one person so that is why if you cannot study pythagoras theorem what whichever goes easy for you if pythagoras theorem goes easy for you study pythagoras if converse uh, theorem uh, converse of the pythagoras theorem is uh, easier for you then study that one but try and study two and if you can't study two then at least do one which is basic proportionality theorem if it doesn't come then it's your bad luck but it should come the basic proper but make sure you do it well okay and if you notice over there uh, uh, in your uh, preliminary paper one of the perpendiculars is not given 
so it is your duty to not just uh, study like a parrot but understand the basic work and know that there should be another perpendicular that should that is used in this particular theorem so you have to show the construction okay say that okay uh, let's say i'll uh, put s on the side of ac and p such that ps is perpendicular to ac say okay this is what we say is construction once you show that construction not just on the figure so that means you have to draw the figure and show that draw the figure again and show that and also write it down as construction colon so and so and then begin with your proof whatever you prove okay so three marks should be in your pocket next is construction of circle the construction of circle is what came for the examination a similar one will come not the same one similar one the measurements will be different and same thing you will be asked uh, to uh, uh, measure uh, and state the length of the tangents so i won't speak a lot on this you should be able to bag three marks from here just be make, make sure the figure is big and uh, it is neat do not erase a million times it looks shabby it looks untidy remember somebody else is correcting your paper and they are making special efforts to come to the examination hall while you are enjoying your holidays to come and correct that paper okay so uh, and remember it's hot and humid so they have to make a special effort to come there and correct is they are not just correcting your papers they are correcting so many other papers so when you present give them a nice paper to correct a neat paper to correct then they also like to correct your paper in case if you make a mistake just put a line and no don't scribble do not rub avoid all that okay make it as present is presentable as possible for the person whom you are writing uh, uh, the paper for so write the paper as if you are going to write a love letter okay so that it should be neat presentable look appealing okay and that's when anybody would like to correct your paper otherwise if you be shabby and haphazardly write your paper then somebody will look to cut your marks as well out of anger frustration whatever okay i'm not saying that that happens but i'm saying it's a possibility because after all even teachers are humans okay like you so let's move further question number 5 triangle construction same as circle construction i won't say speak a lot on that whatever construction triangles you got okay the difference is only two types of triangles you may get okay that is one is uh, where the denominator is uh, smaller than the numerator or where the denominator is greater than the numerator remember when the denominator comes smaller than the numerator it will give you like let's say 5 upon 3 then denominator is smaller in this case the new triangle that you're drawing okay compared to the original that new triangle will be larger than the original okay and you have to show the two of them similar to each other and if the denominator is greater than the numerator that is like 3 upon 5 then the new triangle that you will uh, draw will be smaller than the original triangle so learn how to do all that okay practice the construction of the circles and triangles and you should be able to back total of six marks completely for this construction three for circles three for triangles next elimination of substitution problem question number 30 again straight forward problem we should know how to solve the elimination method or substitution method okay the choice will always be between elimination and study learn to do elimination or substitution do any one prepare for any one but make sure you are perfect with one so that you can back three marks that question number 30 is going to have elimination problem if you know how to do it three marks are yours question number 7 is factorization and question number 8 is quadratic uh, uh, sorry question number 31 is factorization and question number uh, 32 is quadratic uh, formula method both for three marks there is no choice between the two now i know that some find it difficult to uh, get the factors in question if you can do well and good i would suggest practice them 
three marks are yours because nothing else is going to come it's not a word problem it's just plain factorization method that has to be applied to that equation that has been given to find the roots and quadratic formula method you should know how to find the discriminant and from there there onwards know whether it just got uh, real and distinct roots or real and equal roots and then continue to find the roots of the equation then you should be able to back back three marks for the quadratic formula method okay so this what i'm trying to show you should be good enough for you to back 30 out of 80 marks uh, the ninth uh, question in mean, this would be the question number 23 finding mode if you notice question number 23 it said find mode okay so learn how to find mode learn the formula learn how to get your free, uh, cumulative frequency and frequency and y2 and so forth okay so uh, learn the formula very well in order to uh, know how to solve this particular thing i'm, I'm not saying about uh, finding median error. find mode okay learn see what is the formula and accordingly practice and you should be able to back two marks and last one uh, would be area of triangle question number 28 this came for two marks the area of triangle there would be two types of problems that i have not mentioned over here one is a straightforward where you're given coordinates of a b and c this is coordinate geometry a b and c you need to know the formula and uh, uh, put those val the values that are given in that formula to find the area of triangle straightforward problem and do not forget at the end of it to write square units because area of triangle has got units so you since you are just given as coordinates so you just write square units do not forget that the other problem that can come is where you have to show that the uh, the points of this triangle are collinear which means you have to show area of triangle is equal to zero so learn to practice those type of problems as well and you will be able to back two marks so again for that to show area of triangle is equal to zero you have to know the formula of area of triangle and know how to put the values in that formula only thing is you have to show it equal to zero if it comes equal to zero you can say it is collinear if it is not equal to zero then you say that the three points are not or non-collinear okay so with this we can easily say we can easily back 30 out of 80 now if you say uh, but sir i find factorization method very difficult okay if you find factorization method difficult it's not the end of the world okay we can still go further and see where because remember in this entire thing I have not mentioned anything about section A. Section A consists of 20 marks. It is up to you to decide what, what uh, chapters are you focusing on and from there prepare even for the one mark. Okay, so section mark is, section A is not there at all. This involves questions from sections C, sorry, section B, C and D. Major from section C. If you notice there is 30 marks. From there, fully four marks is from section B, okay, and eight marks is from section D. So totally twelve marks is not from. So that means eighteen marks is from section C. Again, you see, my focus is on section C. Let's move further. Now, the next part is going to focus on for those students who wish to score higher. Okay, like around 75 percent but that doesn't mean it excludes those students who wish uh, to score above 30 or those who feel that certain um, points mentioned over here on this uh, page or slide is uh, not applicable to them or they find it difficult maybe certain other things which i feel might be difficult for you you can probably try that, those. Let's move further. So, for those who are looking to back 75%, that would be 60 out of 80 <coughs> in maths. For those people, I would say, all you need to do, apart from the 10 that I have given you right now, which we have finished with, 
you may answer another 10 more. So 20 questions will get you 60 out of 80. 75% of them locks. Let's see what, which are those. First one is polynomial division. Question number 29. So this question is fixed. Okay, this is the first question in section C. Always will be the first question. Polynomial division. Okay, for those who are looking to score high, I suggest you do this. Learn how to do this polynomial division and you should be able to bag 3 marks. Next is arithmetic progression. Now this one is question number 33 that came for your preliminary examination. If you have a look, it's saying find the 15 term and then it's saying sum of the first 15 terms of arithmetic progression. Now, there could be a whole number of things that could be asked, but and all the same line, but easier. No word problems are there for level 2. So you will probably have maybe find the 15th term or find uh, the common difference or find the first term or find uh, the sum when the first term and the last term is given. Okay. Or something like this. Find the first, uh, f f um, find the first, uh, find the 15th term. And from there on, find the first 15 terms. Something around those lines will be there. So, no word problems. I suggest you learn different uh, problems on numerical problems, not word problem, on arithmetic progression. Learn the formulas and three marks should not be a difficulty. Trigonometry application, three marks. Many people shy away or get afraid of this three marks which are there for... Uh, trigonometry application. See the trigon application of trigonometry which is problem which is there for match level 2 students is way easier than the problem that is there for match level 1 student. There should be no reason why you should not be able to answer. Yes, you should know the values of sine 30, si uh, sine of 30, sine of uh, cos of 30. Okay, these values you should know. Just learn sine of 30, cos of 30, sine of 60 degrees and cos of 60 degrees and you should be alright. Also, learn sine and cos of 45 degrees, very easy, they are the same for 45 degrees. It's 1 by root 2, very easy. Okay, And learn how to apply. Okay, You should know how you get sine. Sine is opposite upon uh, hypotenuse, then cos is adjacent upon hypotenuse then what is 10 10 is actually sine upon cos or as you may also have been thought opposite upon adjacent okay so these things you should know if you want to score you should know this thing so the more effort you put in the more marks you will bag so try to bag those three marks okay so use we are trying to do some smart work over here rather apart from hard work hard work is necessary essential part but if we if it goes with a little bit of smart work then with not a lot of effort but with some effort we can bag a lot of marks question 4 circle which is question number 38 for your preliminary examination now in this case you got a straightforward theorem which I would suggest learn and go now this would also apply for those who are looking to bag this 30 out of 80 mark. learn this tangent theorem and go okay I'm not saying it will come okay there's a 50% chance that it will come 50% chance it will not come okay why because they can give you a problem okay based on this tangent circles okay so, I'm saying you learn. If you if it's in your luck, you will be able to bag this fifty percent marks by just learning. And that theorem is very very simple, very very easy. Okay, to the solution of that theorem. So I suggest you learn how to un uh, s uh, prove that theorem and increase your chances of scoring those three marks. For the others. We're looking to bag 60 out of 80. I suggest look at uh, some preparatories and see how questions have been framed for uh, 
in for this question number 38 okay where tangents are involved with circles question number 5 surface area and volume now this question number 39 and question number 40 i have said 39 slash 40 because even if you try you may find one difficult one easy so at least in one of them now there is total of 6 marks for this you can study well and you can bag both of these marks in total of 6 marks in surface in a wall or at least you can bag one question one question at least will be easy if you have practiced ok so try to bag 3 marks over there question number 6 that is uh, question number 21 for 2 marks that is proving a number an irrational number as an irrational number ok so you, you were given for preliminary examination that prove that 3 minus root 5 is irrational ok it, it's not difficult if you know how the pattern in which you have to solve that thing it's the same for whatever they will give you ok the numbers will be different but the way you have to solve it remains the same so you can study that and go and there is a choice between um, state whether the rational number 11 upon 80 has a terminal decimal if you feel you can do that you can answer that question uh, well you might as well go with that ok I'm not saying you have to do this. this was straightforward so that is why I mentioned over here but otherwise you can attempt so there will be uh, a choice over here so you can use that for two marks question number uh, 7 in this so question number 22 now there also there is a choice again and that's why I put HCF slash LCM so you can either do HCF or you can learn about LCM and bag those two marks 8th uh, would be trigonometry and now I have kept 7 marks for this because there are different um, we can say questions on this question number 37 if you look at question 37 ok then uh, that is your trigonometry app so I have mentioned over there so 3 max uh, actually 7 marks I have mentioned over there uh, it's just overlapping so you can uh, ignore those uh, 7 marks over there and you can keep it as for just 4 marks over here so question number 24 will go to question number 24 is Yes, so trigonometry, uh, introduction to trigonometry, rather, not trigonometry applications. Uh, trigonometry applications, seven, uh, and this would be finding uh, the length of BT, value of cos B. Now, this type of problem will be coming. It will remain the same. Now, <coughs> for question number 25 that I mentioned, what you have given is evaluate. 5 cot square 45 degrees minus 4 sin square 30 you need to know the values of cot 45 or rather know what is cot theta as you can write it as cos theta and sin theta and then use as I mean you can write cot 45 as uh, cos 45 upon sin 45 and so forth different ways you can solve this you can if you do uh, if you uh, practice trigonometry well you should be able to answer that question also, at this point, I would also like you to remind you that there is one theorem which is sin square theta plus cos square theta or sin square a plus cos square a equal to 1. Learn that. Okay. That could come over here for 2 marks. Okay. So, just be prepared. I'm saying. I'm not saying it will come. It can come because it is part of your portion. And uh, since uh, 3 marks are overlapping over here, I would suggest turn to section A and there are questions, one mark question, like question number 10, write the simplified form of sec A into cot A. If you have a good understanding of the relationship between sin, cos, tan, cosec, sec and cot, this question is very, very easy. One mark over there, then the other one I would say would be question number 9. Okay, just an application type question. It is in if triangle FER is right angled at A, then the value of sine of F plus R is using a little bit of your common sense. Again, one mark you can buy. And there is one more mark. 
the value of sin square 45 degrees plus cos square 3a equal to 1. This is question number 8 in your prelims examination paper. Then the value of a is what? Again, using, applying your mind and answering. This is what this MCQ type questions are. Also, since it is MCQ, if you do not know, okay, just write some answer. It may be correct. Okay, I'm not, I'm not saying that you don't study. Study and go. But in case if something comes and you don't know, do not leave any question blank. Write something. Because if, by chance, if the question is wrong, chances are that Goa board may give you marks because it was set wrongly. I'm not saying it will give you marks. I'm saying you have a chance. But attempt. You have to attempt all the questions. Write something and keep. Okay? So that you increase your chances of bagging the marks. So, those three marks, that question number 37, we have already taken in this third question that you can see here. So, instead of this third question number 37, uh, we can look at question number 8, 9 and 10. All are in a line, all are of trigonometry questions for three marks. So, three marks replaces three marks and still we have seven marks that we can bag. Question number 9, uh, in this case would be question number 26 ratio of area of triangles now this particular theorem which is not there for you to learn to prove uh, is there for batch level 1 so since it is not there for you to prove they have to give you one question on that because it, it is a part of your syllabus it is part of your portion so there will be a question similar to what came in your prelims question number 26 which said let triangle XYZ similar to triangle RST and their areas be respectively 64 square centimeter and 121 square centimeter. If ST is equal to 15.4 centimeter, then find YZ. So learn this type of problem for one mark and uh, sorry for two marks and you can bag those two marks. Okay. And tenth is probability, okay, which is very very easy. You've been doing since uh, ninth standard, so it shouldn't be difficult. And there are only two marks for this chapter, and both of these uh, these two marks are in section A for one mark each. Okay. And question sixteen was probability, and there was another one. Let's see where it is. Okay. Another question was there. <coughs> okay, somehow can't find it over here. Question 16 and mm, okay, somehow I can't find it over here. But there, there is another question for one mark over here. Uh, yes, question number 20. Sorry, I was searching everywhere. Question number 20 and question number 16. For one mark each, probability. Very, very easy. Both the questions are very easy. Ka the most famous or uh, most frequently asked questions of probability are the ones with cards. So you should know. 52 cards. Four types are there. Two are black, two are red. Which are the face cards, non-face cards. Remember, Joker is not part of this 52 cards. Okay. So learn. We, have <coughs> we don't have numbers till 10. We don't have number 1. Rather, we have A's instead of that. Uh, okay. So, we have one. Uh, sorry. We have a jack. We have a queen. And we have a, a king. Okay. So, we don't have 1 to 10. We have uh, A's to 10. And then we have jack, queen and king. Okay. And then you should know uh, what is the color of spades. What is the color of clubs or flower. What is the color of... Uh, diamonds or heart should know all that okay so with this we cover 60 marks of the paper and you should be able to bag 75 percent and now in this in this entire 60 marks if you have noticed i have only included uh, two in probability and three in uh, trigonometry that means five marks totally from section a okay Apart from that, the remaining 55 marks are either from B, section B, C or D. Majority are from section C. So you see, 
where my focus lies bigger mark help you to score better so let's move further and see what we need to score more than 60 those are looking to score full marks more than 75 percent and this section further will also be helpful for everybody else all the students those who are looking to pass those who are looking to score 45 percent of the marks 50 percent of the marks 60 percent of the marks 75 or even full marks okay continue watching the video and you will see that how you can score better in your upcoming examination also at this point of time i would also ask you to hit the like button if you have liked watching this video share this video with your friends and classmates and if you haven't subscribed to this channel please do subscribe more videos will be coming as your days draw nearer to the exam so you can update the wherever a video is uploaded also there is a whatsapp channel that uh, the link to that is in the description box below if you want to refer to any notes uh, or any circulars that i put up over there you can definitely follow that channel as well and ask others to follow as well let's continue and finish with this video and see how we can ace this upcoming examination so first thing you should remember no pain no gain if you there are many phrases like that there are no shortcuts to success success so if you want to do well you need to work hard you need to work smart okay first thing is know your syllabus well know which chapters are there know which chapters you will cover okay know what you will you should know also know what you will cover in those chapters study systematically study smartly if you have covered your portion and you want to make sure double make sure triple make sure that you want to score full marks or very high marks then refer to additional study materials which are available anywhere okay sometimes it comes in the newspapers sometimes it is there in different preparatories answers the one in preparatories also there is a unsolved section okay uh, look forward to those unsolved section answer them okay without banking on the answers that are there behind and this what i'm trying to say here is applicable to all your subjects not just to maths level 2 okay applicable is applicable to all the students whether it's whether you are also have the language whether you have whether you are taking konkani marathi french portuguese or any other uh, language or for uh, science or social science studies and so forth always start with easier problem this is applicable or start with easier questions okay so that will get you going if you start with a difficult one first you will get stuck there and you will get frustrated and your brain will get fried okay so start with easier problem it will develop confidence within you you will feel like okay you're getting somewhere you are making progress so you're tricking your mind to believing that okay i'm doing well Okay, so start always with easier problems. It's more like say, your brain is like a an engine. You need to get it started, get it warmed up first before really um, going on a long drive. Okay, so uh, start with the easier ones first. Try to put uh, all the formulas down together, whether it is for science or maths or anything else. Uh, for maths level two, put all the f f formulas which are there. for all the amplit on a piece of paper so when you go for the examination all you need to do is just glance through that formula i forgot a formula so that means i should not turn pages that will get me more tensed more worked up so why not just have a sheet of paper let's say you know when we disc when we go for examination we have a group of friends where we keep discussing various things suddenly somebody says something okay what is the area of sector I did that, but I forgot. Now what I'll do? I am going to turn pages, and I'm going to get nervous. Rather, pull out your sheet and see. Scroll down and see. Okay, here it is. Uh, area of sector. Fine, I'm ready with it. I just needed to have a look at it. So then, so formally, put all the formulas together. Put all the theories, uh, theorems together. Okay, 
and you should be good enough. So just one last minute glance, it really helps. Devote sufficient time to graphs, figures, construction. So graphs, as I told you, four marks are there for graphs. So you should dedicate some time to that. Figures, okay, like figures from circles, from surface area and volume, or from mm, circles, okay. All this have got figures. So trigonometry, I mean, look at the figures. See how the question is framed based on the figures that are given. Construction. Six marks, be neat, know how to draw them, okay, and be try to be as accurate as possible. Make sure you have a sharpened pen, uh, pencil, sorry, make sure the circle, uh, the pencil, if it is dark, make sure that it is not blunt, okay, and also at the same time, make sure your compass is not wobbling or shaking. Test your compass properly first itself. Make sure that the pointer of the compass and the pencil are at the same level. Okay, you should, pencil should not be at one level and the uh, pointer should not be at the other level. Okay, such things uh, lead to errors in construction. Question, uh, I mean, six point, solve papers. If you haven't been solving papers, at least now do so. Because when you solve papers, you get an idea of the type of questions that are going to come. You also get idea of how long it takes you to solve questions. Also, it will take give you good idea of how long uh, the paper is, uh, how long it will take you to solve that particular paper. Okay, so I would suggest solve some question papers. It will always come in handy. Next, question seven. Avoid picking a new topic which you have not studied yet. So now you're in the last stretch of <coughs> your SSE. If you can handle it fair and well and good, then you can take up a new topic if you haven't done so, provided your brain can cope up with it. If not, forget it, leave it, avoid it. Okay? Trying to put something in your brain at the last moment would lead to uh, forgetting things that you were well versed with. Okay? So avoid that. And important thing is take rest. At least seven hours of sleep is necessary. Now, whether you take seven hours or uh, you sleep seven hours uh, at a stretch or whether you break it up in parts is up to you. I would suggest you s sleep for uh, six to six and a half hours and in between somewhere in the afternoon, try to take half an hour's rest. It recharges you. Okay? That's my opinion. Uh, it can work differently for your body, for you. Okay, So you see what is best for you. So this is how you can Score 80 out of 80. Practice, practice, practice. That's all I would say for maths. The more you practice, the more you chances you increase of scoring higher marks and even full marks. Okay. <coughs> so certain tips while answering the paper, I would just give you, I give this almost every year. You just got to relax and don't be nervous. It's not the first major examination uh, is not the last, sorry, exam, major examination you will be answering. There will be many more coming your way. So relax, it's just an exam, nothing big. Okay, you answer, you do your best, and then leave the rest to God. Second, always look at your paper. See, when you, uh, most of the time I see students, they answer, and they are very satisfied with their answering. They don't want to go through their paper and see for mistakes. No. You should go through the mistakes and have a, uh, go through your paper and check for mistakes. Check for your mistakes as if you are checking uh, your uh, enemy's uh, paper. So, but so that, ah, okay, I want to find a mistake. That should be your attitude. If you look with that attitude of finding a mistake, you will find a mistake. And if you find mistakes, is better rather you find the mistake than the person who is correcting your paper find a mistake. Because if he or she finds the mistakes, you will also lose your mark. If you find your mistakes, you gain marks. You don't lose marks. So, be very critical about your paper once you... So, learn to finish in time and then have a look at your paper. So, leave sufficient time to scan through your paper once you have finished. Okay? And search for mistakes. Don't be satisfied and be happy with what you have answered. Okay? Next. <laughs> Answer difficult problems last. Let's say you come across a problem. And the problem is difficult for you. 
first time you came across it, don't work yourself with it. Keep that question for the last. Don't answer randomly. Okay, let's say, <coughs> sorry, question number 25. I'm just taking it. Is difficult for you. Question number difficult, uh, 25 is difficult. Leave that question to the last. After you have answered question number 42, start with question number 25. Suddenly, in between, uh, you say, okay, now after 32 question, I'll answer 25 because I think I can answer. No, don't do that. Because it becomes difficult for the person who corrects the paper. Okay? You may get your marks properly or not, um, may not be proper. Because, as I said, those who are correcting are also human. And they've got a sheet and they have to write the uh, and uh, marks that you get against the question they have another sheep so that makes it difficult for them if you do it randomly rather if you do it right towards the end it makes it easier for them okay you finished question number 42 and now he or she is looking to attempt that is the thinking of the person who is correctly attempt whatever was left in between or alternatively you can leave space remember you can order as uh, or ask for as many supplements as possible uh, don't worry about that. You've already paid for it. So, no problem. You can leave space and then come back to it. Or, you can continue and write at the end after you finish answering everything, then go to answer the one which you have left. So, leave your uh, the difficult ones last. If you feel you'll get stuck, answer it last. Fourth, draw figures and graph big. Make it big as possible. Graph paper also I see. A big full scale paper is there and they will draw a small one. Why small? When you have been given a big, provided with a big pr uh, paper, make it big. When you make anything big, it looks neater. Whether it is your circles, construction, triangle construction, or your graph, or even diagrams in science paper. If you make it big, it looks neater. If you make it small, it looks all cramped up and it looks untidy as well. Fifth, be neat, write question numbers clearly. Do not forget the question number. Like, let's say, as I told you, 25th question, you've forgotten and now you're starting. You started with the question, but you forgot to write the question number. Don't do that mistake. If you do that mistake, you could lose marks. So write question. If it is saying A, 25A, write 25A. It's say 25-1, 25-1. Right? And be neat in your work. If you have found a mistake, don't go on scribbling. Just put a line, move further. Okay? If uh, Don't go to erase too much. If you feel that you have to erase the whole diagram, Leave that, put a line, go to the spot below that or go to the next page and draw another one. Don't erase too much. You're wasting your time erasing and you're making it untidy. You're just increasing your chances of reducing your marks. Okay, so avoid all that. Six, do not mix fair work with rough work. Some people, uh, some students don't have, uh, don't know uh, the value of fair work. Okay. Keep fair work where it is and the side. Put a column, okay, right hand side and do your rough work over there. Do you, uh, when uh, you have a, uh, usually have a habit of doing the rough work at, on the last page of your book, okay. So that's why when it comes to your paper, there is no last page of your book. Everything is a fair work only. Then where do you, then some do there itself. So avoid doing that. It confuses the person who is correcting your paper. That person doesn't know whether that is a fair work to be considered or rough work. So put a column towards your right hand side and do whatever additional work you want to do, rough work over there in the right hand side. So the person who is correcting the person, the teacher who is correcting knows that okay that is your rough work and it should it need not be considered. So it can be wrong as well but the teacher will not consider that. Do make sure that there is proper separation of fair work and rough work. Do not skip steps. This happens mostly with those students who are overconfident. They look to skip steps. Steps have got marks in maths. Most importantly, all the formulas have to be written. First, write the formula and then substitute or input the values in that formula. Do not directly put the values in the formula and expect you will get your marks. So, all the formulas have got marks. All the units at the towards the end have got marks. So, if there is centimeter, centimeter square, you have to put that. Final statements have to be given wherever for three marks, 
you have to put final statements like so these are the roots of these or whatever the half a mark is for that final statement go through the answers thoroughly you know uh, sometimes we tend to be over confident and we also look to overlook question like uh, the question looks familiar to the one that i studied and okay i answer but there is was some change in that keep very want so all of it says all the best for your upcoming examination you work hard for examination if you want to scale the everest of a success then you need to work hard it's not one day thing study one day and go on the next day and is the examination no you have to put in efforts learn practice more and more the more and more you practice the better marks you will achieve also at this moment i would like to thank all of you for following this uh, video i hope this you find this video helpful for you you can uh, always email me at uh, smartkidstutorial@gmail.com uh, you can even uh, follow the youtube channel and also the whatsapp channel okay and uh, If you like watching this video hit the like button share this video with your friends as well as your classmates do not forget to subscribe to the channel and once again th uh, thank you very much for watching this video i wish you the very best for your upcoming examination thank you bye